turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to start in Proverbs 31. We'll look at some passages in the book of Proverbs. But Proverbs 31, we're not going to look at the entire chapter. In fact, we're actually going to just look at the, the last two verses as a springboard for our message this morning. We're going to actually start in these two verses and end with these two verses and jump a lot of places in between. So uh, Proverbs chapter number 31, Proverbs 31, draw your attention to the last two verses of the chapter. On Wednesday evenings, we've been dealing with the book of Proverbs, and uh, maybe you may not realize, but the last two chapters in the book of Proverbs are really uh, practical examples of someone who implements the truths of Proverbs. And of course, 31 Here's the virtuous woman. It's a picture of the, the godly woman who uh, lives in the proverbial wisdom of the writings of Solomon through the inspiration of the Spirit here. And when it comes to the end of the chapter, notice these words, starting verse 30. He says, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. This morning, we're going to look at the, the virtues of a godly woman. And I want to draw attention to that phrase. I thought this morning, really, verse 31, give her the fruit of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. This morning, I want to emphasize that thought. And moms, uh, you're busy. There's a lot of things you do with your hands, and proverbially with your hands. And what we want to do this morning is, uh, encourage you, but also challenge you. What are you doing? Uh, he says, give her the works of her hands. They will praise you. They also can do the opposite, can't they? So let's look this morning at what are we doing with our hands. Godly virtues, the virtues of a godly mother this morning. Let's pray. Father, we do come to you this morning thanking you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, to open a copy of your word. And Lord, I pray this morning. As we look at four truths concerning mothers in the book of Proverbs, that, Lord, mothers will be encouraged. Mothers will also be challenged. But we love our mothers. They're a great gift from you. And, Lord, I pray this morning that all is said and done. We bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. I don't know about you, but mothers seem to always have some praise of wisdom to give us. I'm sure in your house you probably can think back to some things your mama always told you. Little tidbits of wisdom she instilled within you. Well, I'm going to give you eight things you'll probably never hear a mother say. Eight things you'll probably never hear a mother say. Number one, how on earth can you see the TV sitting that far back? Let's go a little closer. How about this? Oh, just leave all the lights on. It makes the house look more cheery. How many of you grew up and mom was kind of like, turn the light off. You leave the room, cut the light off. How I many you heard that? Yeah. All right. Here's another one you probably never will hear a mother say. Here, let me smell that shirt. Yeah, it's good for another week. <laughs> or how about this? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Keep that stray dog, honey. I'll be glad to walk him and feed him every day just for you. <laughs> or how about this? Well... If Timmy's mom says it's okay, then that's good enough for me. I never heard that one. Or how about this? Hey, you know, the curfew, it's just a general idea to shoot for. It's not like I'm running a prison around here or anything. I like this one. I never heard this one either. You know what, honey? I don't have a tissue. Just use your sleeve. It'll be okay. And then... Lastly, don't bother wearing a jacket. The wind chill is bound to improve. <laughs> now it's, it gets 65 degrees. Oh, it's a little cool. You gotta, no, we all know. That. Things you'll probably never hear a mother say. Now, this morning, of course, is Mother's Day, and I've prayed it, and I've said it again this morning. Mothers are a gift from God. Amen. Now, I don't know your home life, how you grow up, but the fact is, without a mother, you wouldn't be here. Okay, it's just that simple. But uh, I understand the different backgrounds here, different situations. But no matter, I understand the fact that you have a mother. Mothers are a gift from God. They're a precious gift. And uh, they do a lot of work. They do all kinds of things that we take for granted. 
and we need to recognize them, and we need to show them how much we appreciate them. And um, you know, as mothers are a gift from God, this is my question to mothers this morning, though. Mothers, are you the gift God intended you to be? Are you the gift God intended you to be? Um, we're going to look at four facts this morning concerning God's will for motherhood. And, of course, the, the virtues of a godly mother, we're going to look at four godly virtues. If you would turn over to chapter 19 of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 19. Proverbs 19 and verse number 14. Proverbs 19 verse 14 says this. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. A godly mother is, first of all, prudent. Godly mothers are prudent. He talks about a prudent wife. Now, let me go ahead and say this and get out of the way. Before you're a mother, you should be a wife. Okay? That's the way God set it up. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Godly mothers, a godly mother is prudent. The word prudent here means someone who is circumspect or someone who is intelligent. Once again, we talked about tidbits of wisdom that mom has for us. Does, does, always having something to say, some kind of little bits of wisdom. And the idea here of uh, being prudent actually carries the idea of teaching, guiding wisely. Mothers are constantly teaching, are they not? We have to be taught over and over and over and over again the same truths about keeping the refrigerator door open, about playing with the light socket, all different kinds of things. But mothers are constantly teaching. A godly mother is going to be prudent, one who is giving wisdom, one who is constantly teaching. I want you to note the parallel here. Notice verse 14 talks about, what's well, actually verse 13 and 14 says, A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So two verses, a couplet here that go together. But notice the parallel in verse 14. He mentions, you know, houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. That's an earthly father, correct? Notice the parallel, on the other hand, means this for you, a prudent wife is a gift from God. Amen. Now, we intend, all of us probably, to leave an inheritance for our children or our grandchildren. That's wonderful. It's noble. But understand what the Bible is saying here. As much as noble as it is for parents to think of their children and grandchildren, understand this. Men, if you have a prudent wife, that is a gift from God. But notice here this couplet once again, these four parallels. It says, verse 13, a foolish son is a calamity of his father. Calamity, destruction, shame. Understand that? Then the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Contentions being that of strife. How many of you like the rainstorm comes and you hear drip, 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 drip. Some of you are going, would you stop, please? That's the point. Or you wake up in the middle of the night and you realize somebody's gone to the bathroom and didn't shut the faucet off and you wake up to hearing the, the spigot in the bathroom drip, 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 drip. And of course, the house is quiet, but you can hear it throughout the whole house, can't you? And what do you got to do? You can't ignore it. You have to get it up and shut it off. The strife is like a continual dropping. It's annoying. It's aggravating. It causes contention. It worries you to death. So there's the calamity, the destruction of a foolish son, the strife, and then number three, in verse 14, houses and riches, inheritance of father, that's good, but it's temporal. But then it comes to this concluding thought, once again, emphasizing the gift from God, the prudent wife. You see, we live in a human world. 
marriages are made between two humans. And we have a bright, bright idea of bringing more of them into the world. Isn't that great? And here we have these two verses that emphasize we're the family. Talk about things that literally happen in a family, just the reality of it. You know, sometimes children don't always come out like we expect them to, like we train them to, right? That's hardship. And then, you know, as husband and wife, sometimes there's strife and there's contentions. That's just being human, isn't it? But then there's some good things in there. You know, we can work together, have an inheritance. But he brings us to this final thought. Won't you understand, though, that a prudent wife, a godly mother that's prudent, is from the Lord. Mothers, I know that we get on your nerves. Wives, we drive you crazy. But a godly mother is prudent. She continually is investing in those around her in teaching in guiding, in giving godly wisdom. I want to encourage you. Examine yourself, and if that's you, keep on keeping on. If you look around, you go, there's some areas in my life that I haven't... Take advantage of every opportunity in your life to invest in your children and in your husband. He needs you too. Constantly be prudent. Easter Sunday, three years ago, Easter Sunday, 2013, uh, in the afternoon on Highway or Interstate, one, Interstate 77, uh, between the North Carolina and Virginia border, if you're familiar with that area, you're leaving Winston-Salem, you're on 77, and you're going north, uh, you're going to go through Mount Airy, Mayberry, North Carolina, go through Mount Airy, then you go through Fancy Gap, and go up to the mountains, you cross the border, and... You come over to Woodlawn and Galax. Woodlawn's where I pastored my first church, so I'm familiar with that area. But in that area, about three years ago, on Easter Sunday, on that stretch of Highway I-77, Interstate 77, there was a major pileup. Matter of fact, the interstate was shut down for several hours. Um, and when it was all said and done, the officers uh, reported that on that day, that in Sunday afternoon, there were actually 17 different collisions that involved 95 different cars and trucks. Because going up the mountain, the fog set in. And people foolishly continued going the same speed. Even the visibility was reduced to less than 100 feet. So they're going 65 miles an hour down the, ha- down, down the interstate in the fog and 17 different accidents. You know, how foolish was it to blaze on down the interstate in the fog? Visibility was greatly reduced. People were blinded from what was in front of them. Mothers, I want to remind you of this, this proverb, Proverbs 27, verse 12. It speaks of men, but it's mankind. It speaks of women as well. It says, a prudent man foreseeth the evil. This is Mother's Day. Let's change that a little bit. The truth is still there. A prudent mother sees the evil and hideth herself. I'm going to even go further. Hideth her children, her husband, because the simple pass on and are punished. We need godly mothers who are prudent to look ahead, to see the evil, and to keep herself, her family, her children from the evil that lie ahead. This world is living in a fog. We need godly women to stand up and to teach godly wisdom so that we're not allowing our children or our grandchildren to fly through life in a fog only to end up ruined. Now, I understand they make their own choices to a certain point. But when they're on our home, teach them. Teach them. Be prudent. So first of all this morning, a godly mother is prudent. Now turn with me a few chapters over to chapter number 11. Chapter number 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Not only is a godly mother prudent, but chapter 11, verse 22, we find these words. It's stated in the negative, and we're going to emphasize it in the positive. 
It says, as a jewel of gold in a wine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. So let's make it a positive. A godly mother not only is prudent, but she uses discretion. She's discreet. She knows. That when I think of discretion, I think of the idea that not only knowing what to say, but also when to say it and how to say it. That is discretion. It's that element of wisdom, once again, that's taught in the book of Proverbs. That godly mother is going to be prudent, and she's going to use discretion. And the idea here of discretion means intelligent perception, or that of judgment, or even that of a mandate. It says, without discretion. Mothers, we, don't, we need mothers to have discretion, not mothers who are indiscreet. But the idea here also is not only not having it, but the idea without could also have the idea of departing from it. Mothers don't depart from discretion. Don't depart from godly living. We need mothers who are constantly teaching, training, and leading by example. Do not depart from the wisdom way. I know life gets tough, life gets hard, and sometimes you look around and think, what in the world is going on? Nobody ever listens. We're listening, I promise. We just don't always heed your words at the appropriate time. But we need you. We need you to use discretion. Do not depart from the wisdom way. Now, this particular verse in the original, uh, the tone of the verse and in the original language is very emphatic. It is emphasizing this idea of we need discretion. We need intelligent, prudent women who will guide, who will lead, who will not depart from the ways of God. And he says here, now there's, isn't this a beautiful picture? A jewel of gold in a, wine, a swine's snout. Anybody ever worked with pigs before? A few, a handful of us. I've done, yeah. My uncle raised some hogs, and I worked one summer helping him. You know, if you ever work with hogs, you go home and you take a shower. You still smell like a hog. There's something about that scent. It does not easily go away. doesn't matter how beautiful that piece of gold was. It is still defiled. It is putrid. It is nasty. Notice the parallel. So is a fair woman. Time out, mothers. Let me talk to teenage boys real quick. A fair woman. And then a verse we talked about, the very first verse talked about a woman that was beautiful. What does it say about those things, though? So they're vain. Listen, she may be the prettiest thing you've ever laid your eyes on. She ain't going to stay that way forever. Pretty fades. Pretty, it's wrinkles. Pretty, mm, don't last forever. But beauty isn't the eye of the holder. What's important is what's on the inside. Don't be deceived by the outward. Now, if you get one and she's beautiful on the outside and on the inside, praise God for it. But what's on the inside is more important because that will last a lot longer. It says here, a fair woman. That's the parallel of the, the jewel of gold. Oh, it's beautiful on the outside. But if she's without discretion, she's not walking the wisdom way, she's not living the way God wants her to live, she has no prudence, no, no biblical wisdom, it's just like that nasty hog. You see, you can take that hog you can wash them, you can dress them, put a blue ribbon on them at the county fair. But as soon as you let them go, they're going straight back to the slop, going straight back to the mud. So let me emphasize, for those that are single, single men, the most important thing is a woman that fears God. Now God bless you. Now, uh, I hope if you marry her, you think she's pretty.
Okay? But what matters is on the inside. Notice here the idea of prudence and discretion. The idea here, once again, that no matter how fair, how beautiful she is, if she is without discretion, once again, the original language emphasizes this. What it is saying simply is a woman that has no discretion is a monstrosity of a lady because she is no lady. She may have good looks on the outside, but on the inside she is putrid, she is rotten, she is vile. She is not worth your attention for the godly man. Women, ladies, moms, don't depart from the wisdom way. We need every godly woman that we can find. The world we live in today, we can look around and we see a lot of things that are wrong. It's not the politician's fault. It's we've developed a generation that's departed from God. Do not depart from the wisdom way. Notice, as we talk here, this verse 22, the emphasis of the fair woman, uh, without discretion, is like that jewel of gold in a swine snout. Turn back, or look back to verse number 16. Here's the opposite. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. We need gracious women. They will be honorable. They will be honored, as we read our first text. Give her the work of her hands. They will praise her. Mothers, we are the workers of your hands. And we praise you this morning. And we thank you. So a godly mother is prudent. A godly mother uses discretion. And then look at chapter 14 of Proverbs. Chapter 14, verse 1. Chapter 14, verse 1. Notice, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Not only is a godly mother prudent, the idea of wisdom, intelligence, teaching it, not only is she a discretion, not, not departing from the mandate, having wise judgment, having discretion, but she builds her house. She wisely builds her house. The word build there means to make, to repair, to set up, or even to obtain children. She is building her house. The stability of the home greatly depends on the wisdom and the virtue of the mother, the wife, in the home. You see, there's a, a picture here for us, you know, he uses the word, as every wise woman buildeth her house. When we think of someone building a house, literally building the house, we don't generally think of women building the house, do we? You, you, you know, they were building my home. I went out there, and I never saw a woman on a job site. I was saying they couldn't be there, but when I went out there, the men were out there. They were the ones digging the foundation, pouring the concrete, you know, dropping off the, the lumber, doing the carpentry work, laying the shingles. Doing all, they actually built the structure itself. But there's an emphasis here. The woman builds the home. A godly woman will wisely build her home. She will have a plan set for it. She will see what needs to be done, what needs to be corrected. And once again, she is building her home. She is making it. She's repairing it. She's setting it up as a constant work. She is diligent to make sure her home is the home God would have it to be. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 4. There is a choice that every wife, every woman needs to make. Proverbs chapter 4 Chapter 12, verse 4. A virtuous woman. That's what you want to be, right? Ladies, you want to be a virtuous woman? It's a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Can I get an amen from the husbands? Okay. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Women, you can choose to be a virtuous woman and be the crown jewel, the little crown of your husband. 
Or, here's your second option. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. That, that is so true. It's one or the other. And literally, let's, let's put it in this, this little phrase here. You have a choice. You can be a crown or a cancer. That's the idea of rottenness, isn't it? Rottenness in his bones. Once again, the woman in the home sets the tone for the home. The stability in the home rests with her. Ladies, I know we don't express it enough, but man, do we appreciate you in our homes. We appreciate being able to come home and come home to a loving wife, a mother who's taking care of things. That there's all the things that we don't see, that we take for granted. You know, we, some of us, we, we may come home and, you know, supper's almost ready. We didn't see how you were slaving over it for the past hour, hour and a half, you know, planning it out. Didn't think about you going to the grocery store and you're planning the meals. We don't think about those things. We just sit down and eat. We say the, we say the prayer and thank the Lord. But never say thank you to mom, to your wife. Today we're saying thank you. Because you're building our homes. And if you are a godly mother, a godly woman, you are the crown of your husband. Amen. And husbands, I'm going to encourage you today to let her know that. Let her know how important she is. That we should do it more often, but particularly today, on Mother's Day. Let her know how much you appreciate her. Sit down and take at least five or ten minutes and think about all the things that she does that's often taken for granted. And tell her, thank you. A godly woman will wisely build her home because she understands that while she may love her house, her home is much more important. Her family is the object of her affection. The family is what is important. In the founding of our country, they met with the Constitutional Convention, and after having met for four or five weeks, uh, they had come to a deadlock, been on a deadlock on a topic for four or five weeks, and having sat in there, there was this big debate about uh, the states of the United States, how they should be represented in our government. Uh, the larger states wanted to be represented by population. The smaller states wanted a uh, one state, one vote uh, rule so that everything was equal. And they'd been in a deadlock for about five weeks. Having been in a deadlock, Benjamin Franklin stood on the floor of the Continental Congress and he said these words. He says, Mr. President, he says, the small progress we've made after four or five weeks, close att attendance and continual reasoning with each other, uh, our different sentiment are almost on almost every question, several of the last producing as many no's as a's, and is me thinks of melancholy proof of the imperfection of human understanding. We indeed seem to feel our own want of political wisdom since we have been running about it in search of it. We've gone back to ancient history for models of government and examined the different forms of those republics from which they've been formed, the seeds of their own dissolution. We have viewed modern states all around Europe, but find none of their constitutions suitable to our circumstances. He says, in this situation of this assembly, Groping as it were in the dark to find political truth and scarce able to distinguish it when presented to us, how has it happened? Sir, we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of lights to illuminate our understanding. In the beginning of this contest with the Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we were daily we had daily prayer in this room for the divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed 
frequent instances of the superintending providence in our favor. To what kind providence we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity? And have we forgotten that powerful friend? Or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is probable that an empire, or is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings, that, quote, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without this con concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. And he goes on and makes a, makes a motion that the continuing days every day be started in prayer. But in his speech, he quoted pro or Psalm 127, Psalm 127, verse 1. Let's look over there. Look at a godly woman builds her house. But Benjamin Franklin realized that day that you know, when they sensed danger, when we were at war with Great Britain, they met and prayed every day. But now when they were living in freedom, how easy it was to drift away from this great friend who had given us this great freedom. And he quotes this verse, Psalm 127.1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. Women, you build our homes, wisely build our homes. But remember this, without the Lord, we build in vain. That's why we need godly mothers. Mothers that are in the word of God, mothers that are faithful to the word of God, When we have mothers like that, the foundation on which they build will last. It will last for all eternity. Mothers, stay true to the Lord. Be a woman of prayer. Be a woman of the word. So we see this morning that a godly mother is prudent. A godly mother uses discretion. She wisely, wisely builds her house. And then back to our opening text, Proverbs Chapter 31. Proverbs 31. How is all this possible? Well, this is our last point this morning. Proverbs 31, verse number 30. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. He said, a godly mother is prudent, a godly mother is your discretion, she wisely builds her house, all because of this one truth, because she fears the Lord. See, a woman that fears the Lord is going to have biblical wisdom. She's going to be prudent. She's going to use discretion, and she's going to build her home according to the word of God, because she fears the Lord. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, the fear of the Lord is, is two aspects. First of all, it is the, the awe, the amazement, the wonder of the Savior. If a godly mother is going to be a godly mother, she needs to fear the Lord, first of all, in the matter of salvation. The awe of the Savior, his love, his mercy, his grace, his wisdom, all his magnificent attributes, we stand in awe of how wonderful he is. But the second aspect of fearing the Lord is the oh, oh. Of the Lord. The fact that he is holy. He is righteous. And he is just. And what he says. Will come to pass. Many times we tend to emphasize the awe. And the love and the grace of God. And we forget. That he is holy. And his holiness will not be compromised. That he is righteous. 
justly. He will judge justly. Sometimes in our minds we have it mixed up. and Most we don't need you to get it mixed up. We need you to fear the Lord. First of all, have him as your Savior. And then teach him to your children. So he can become their Savior. We need mothers who stick to the Word of God. They don't get things confused because, you know, when you and I and our children stand before God, the time for mercy and grace is past. When we stand before the righteous judge, he will judge righteously and justly. There will be no mercy. There will be no grace because it has been rejected in this life. We need you to help us teach our young people, our children. Is it easy to stand up and say no? No, because we don't like repercussions sometimes. But our children need to hear no. They need to have discipline. They need to have structure in the home. They need to have rules. They need to, because they need to understand the fear of the Lord. We are all going to be held accountable for our actions. See, the godly mother, as she fears the Lord, understands her role as a servant. She's a servant in the home. She's a servant to the Almighty God. She has obtained a husband. She's obtained children. Those are gifts from God. And she will serve God in that capacity to the best of her ability. She's going to cultivate a relationship with God through His Word, through prayer, through praise, through meditation. Because she fears the Almighty God. And notice when she does, the verse says, she shall be praised. Amen. She shall be praised. The next verse talks about her works. Give her her works. Because her works will praise her. The most important works you have, ladies, are your husbands and your children. You invest in us. And we praise you this morning. The works of your hand, your husband, your children, your house, your job. Godly mother shall be praised. There is no promise for the ungodly. I'm going to encourage you this morning, ladies. Be a godly mother. Be a godly wife. You know, we are sitting here this morning and we are honored to have our mothers with us. And I know there was mothers in different stages here. There are some young ladies here who, who are not mothers, but one day uh, they dream to be married and to have children of their own. Can I encourage you, those of you that are single, you know, being a godly mother doesn't start when you get married. It doesn't start when you bring a baby into this world. It starts now. Amen. See, to be a godly mother, you have to be a godly wife. To be a godly wife, you have to be a godly woman. So it starts now. You can be the godly woman, young woman God wants you to be now, Prepare you to be the godly wife that you need to be and the godly mother you need to be. But as mothers here, we're at different stages of motherhood. Some, I don't know if there's any here this morning, we have some that are mothers to be. I saw some walk in with, the, with newborns that just haven't been there first or, or second, but they're still newborns. And we have mothers that have children at home ranging from little ones to teenagers. And then we have those that, you know, mothers, your, your little ones have, have left home. But even though they're no longer living home, you're still their mother, aren't you? And I know this morning that in different stages of motherhood, there's different challenges. But I want you to con continue being the godly mother. Yeah. Now, we read that verse about, you know, a foolish son is a calamity to his father. You know, when a child leaves home, they leave home, don't they? The choices they make are theirs. Don't let that discourage you. Continue. <laughs> To be the godly mother. Amen. Continue to be the godly woman because the verse says, she shall be praised. Amen. Don't get discouraged. We need you more today than we've ever needed before. Be a godly mother. This morning, I want to challenge you as we come to the end of the message. Not only for the women, even though there's been the topic of conversation this morning, but for the men. Are we the godly man or woman God would have us to be?
Think of motherhood. We can think of fatherhood. You know, it doesn't start when the baby comes. It starts today. No matter what age you are, the decision to be godly starts today. May we choose wisely to be the godly individual God's desire is for us to be. Let's pray. Father, we come to this morning thanking you for your mercy and love and your grace. And once again, we thank you for godly mothers. And Lord, I pray today that you would encourage the mothers who have done what is right. Lord, I know it can be easy to, be, to get discouraged. Lord, I pray this morning you would encourage them to know this morning that we are praising them and that, Lord, you are lifting them up as well. Lord, they have been obedient to you. Lord, they have uh, built their homes. They've had prudence. They've had discretion. Lord, may we, may we not, may not always see the results that we want to see. Lord, I pray that we would never be discouraged, that mothers would never be discouraged, Lord, that, that fathers would never be discouraged, or that each and every individual would be challenged to continue to be the godly man or woman, the young person that you would have them to be, knowing, knowing by the promise of your word that, Lord, we will receive justly the rewards you have for us. Lord, I pray this morning that your name will be honored and glorified in all that we do. We give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Uh, Miss James, you'll begin to play. This morning, maybe, the Lord's dealt with your heart about a matter. Maybe this morning, you just want to come and thank God for your mother. Maybe it's a teenager. Maybe it's a young person. Maybe it's an adult. You just want to come grab your mother by the hand and say, would you come pray with me? I want to thank God for my mother. However the Lord's dealing with you this morning, I'm going to encourage you to be obedient. Maybe this, mom, maybe this morning, Mom, you've been discouraged. Maybe you've been, well, just beaten and battered. Can I encourage you this morning to come talk to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Talk to your Heavenly Father. Ask for courage, for strength, to continue marching on. To be the godly man, Mom, mom to be the godly mom you'd, He'd have you to be. You come this morning as the Lord leads. As she plays.